So my name is Livia. I am part of the ecosystem team of DAOSTEC. And I work mainly with community. And we have uh, Genesis, that is the community that we started a year ago in July 2018. It was the first, can you go to the next? Oh, yeah. yeah, Genesis was the first DAO deployed on the DAO stack. And the Genesis mission is to support the ecosystems of DAOs built on the DAO stack and also the gen token economy. So what we're doing here today is an onboarding on True Genesis. And you guys are going to understand how to be an active member of uh, this DAO, that it's a very vibrant and active DAO. So it's the perfect opportunity to understand how to participate and to get more acquainted with um, what a decentralized autonomous organization is. Yeah, uh, my name is Luke. Um, I've been a Genesis Alpha member for almost nine months now. Um, I've com contributed to four proposals, one of which was founding the CuraDAO, uh, a community DAO in the Caribbean islands of Curaçao. Uh, we're trying to create an alternative way of funding community initiatives um, on a small island. Um, Okay, so we're gonna start by talking about the mistakes. And I think this is a very important approach because when we talk about experiments, the main thing that, cons the, that constitutes an experiment, it's actually the amount of mistakes you make during it. Because when you make mistakes, you have the opportunity to evaluate these mistakes and learn from it and take the next steps from it. So one, one mistake that I would love to admit today is that we've been getting onboarding kind of wrong. And we've been doing this for almost a year. And we've been seeing the, um, we've been seeing how the community has been developing with the onboarding choices that we made and that now is finally a good time that we are more mature to approach, um, different ways of welcoming people in. So one big issue was ask for reputation. There was this uh, collective consensus in the community that was, I'm gonna ask for reputation as my first proposal because that's gonna be the easiest way for me to understand the mechanism. So I will understand how MetaMask works, I will understand alchemy, I'll go there, I'll play a little bit and I'll write my proposal uh, introducing myself to the DAO and this will give me reputation. If people approve it and there was this like consensus that everyone would approve, someone that is ask, um, coming in to ask for reputation. But what started to happen that we didn't expect was that people didn't feel the thrill of passing a proposal when they were just asking for reputation, when they were just like, introducing themselves. So what would the thrill come from? Probably something that you feel passionate about or something that you wanted to, that you had some challenge with uh, to become part of their community. So by, um, by submitting non-passionate um, non proposals asking for reputation, it happened that a lot of people got quiet. So a lot of reputation holders weren't participating in the DAO. And, um, and this led to uh, more bureau bureaucracy in the community also because when you have just a few people participating, they start to dictate the, um, the environment of what is accepted in the DAO or uh, what are, are the practices that people have been taking. So uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't build such an experimental environment. And this leads to lack of action in the DAO in general. So, uh, did you, oh no, yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, so one thing uh, we think it's very good to talk about is that problems are actually opportunities. And if you see that a community that is taking the experiment as like a risk, as a way to try new things that they couldn't do in a current system, this will lead to a more uh, resilient and creative community. Because if everyone is taking, taking risks, committing mistakes, and if those mistakes are being evaluated in a collective way, it's much more likely that this community will be stronger and will be willing to uh, take different risks to become more creative and more resilient. So where do we want to go? Where do we want to go starts on the onboarding, because this is the first step that you're going to give into the DAO. But maybe we should start the onboarding now with all the characteristics that we want to see in the DAO in general. So we want to go to a community that is autonomous. And I think the autonomy part, the A in between the D and the O, it's a very important part of the equation, because without autonomy, you don't really have decentralized organizations because you need to be um, you need to have an intrinsic motivation in order to um, in order to participate without anyone telling you what to do. You have to be connected with your with your passion and with what. You, you have to understand what you want to do in that organization. Playful and experimental, like I said before, I think it's uh, a very good approach to have, that this is an experiment and that we should all be trying new things and connecting with each other in fun ways. And we've been, uh, we've been having so much uh, oppression from this current systems that we are and we are trying to build new systems. So why do we keep bringing oppression to the new systems that we are building? And how can we be more playful and more experimental in this space? Uh, simplicity, it's very important because it's about knowledge symmetry. We all have different types of knowledge and a way for us to connect with each other. It's the Probably the best way to connect with each other, it's in a simple way. When someone says something in a very complicated way and you can't understand it, probably the problem is not on you, the listener, but mostly on the person that it's speaking and not breaking that down and assuming that we are all on the same levels of knowledge. And a point to touch on simplicity and the onboarding is if we, so one thing with the ask for reputation was that the people that became active in the community, they were the entrepreneurs. They were people that had their own ideas, that they already kind of knew that they want to do something. They were more willing to take risks. They were not uh, so concerned with what other people would think. So this became the active people in the space, but then what about the people that don't necessarily have an idea when they come in, but they also want to participate and they don't really know how they could use some guidance. So this guidance could come from all of the people in the community in a decentralized way. And this is part of what we are thinking for future, future onboardings to have like a quest giver, quest taker kind of approach that People, entrepreneurs, or anyone can propose things, uh, ideas, or bounties, or like any format of proposals that people could see that, see that it's inside of their expertise of what they would want to do, and then they could take that quest as a quest taker, and that could be, in a very simple way, their first contribution to the community, and that doesn't need to be anything crazy, but it would make them uh, more excited. And then finally, uh, all of this leads to fluid coordination, because if we are all autonomous, thinking about our motivation, 
If we are being playful and experimental and communicating in a simple way, we will most likely have fluid coordination among all the agents of the DAO. Awesome, thank you. So you might be wondering, how do you onboard somebody into a DAO? So I've been on both sides of, of, of the field. I've been trying to join a DAO and contribute to a DAO, but I'm also trying to create my own DAO and getting people involved into our idea. <coughs> so there are a couple of things. First, you need to recognize that a DAO is more than just a DAP. Um, in the beginning, we started to make like documentation on how to create a MetaMask account and get your first reputation. Um, but we're creating our DAO in Curacao. It's not a very tech-savvy country. So once the people knew how the tech worked, we expected projects to pop up, but it didn't happen at all. Um, so we figured out that it's more about the people and there's way more to it than just this voting app on, based on the blockchain. So first is the vision. You need to express to people what you're trying to achieve, why you're trying to achieve it, and why it even matters to have a DAO. From there, you can introduce them to the app so they know why they want to use the app um, and why this even matters. From there, there will be some, short, some shared values and methods that your community agrees on. Um, for example, in Genesis, um, it is normal to kind of share your proposal with the group first before sharing it with, uh, before submitting it into the DAO. Um, so some are, those are some things that you need to get used to and if you don't know them, it, you might get some strange reactions. And only when you, you understand the vision and you feel the vision, it's, it's part of you, and you know how to, how to use the DAP, you know how to work within this ecosystem, then you will be able to, to have meaningful contributions and find your way within the DAO. Um, so this quote from Confucius, it kind of explains how to best get him on board into a DAO. I hear and I forget. I can talk about DAOs and be like, yeah, I did this and this and this, and you can be like, okay, cool, never mind. You can see it and remember, I'll show it to you in a bit, but that will not be enough. I do and I understand. Once you do it, then you will completely understand how a DAO works. So I'll give you some examples of how it went with me. So I joined Genesis around October 2007, 2018. I had no idea what to expect, but I knew that I wanted to bring these values of DAOs to the Caribbean region. Genesis had nothing to do with the Caribbean region, but I was like, hey, heck it, I'm gonna try it. We submitted a proposal. Um, for a research in Curacao, which spiraled out of control and became a big conference with over 100 people attending. The first time we submitted this proposal and received the funds and were able to organize a meetup across the ocean on a small island because a group of people we didn't know decided that this is a good idea for the broader ecosystem, this was the moment that for me that I really opened my eyes and I started to dive deeper into this, which led to meetups in Trinidad, another meetup in Curacao, and ultimately now leading to the CuraDAO, a DAO in Curacao, um, which we're running as a pilot. It will be based on sustainable development on Curacao. Um, and in December, we're presenting the results at the innovation conference again in Curacao. So I got one final quote um, before finishing off my part. And that's my own quote. Just propose it. If you're wondering if people are, agree with your way of thinking, if you fit within the DAO, just submit a proposal, say, hey, I want to do this or that. You'll get all the feedback that you want to move forward. If you're going to sit on the side, you'll never experience the thrill of being in a DAO, and you will never receive the feedback to actually become a full member of it. And I think in the end, this is what you want. You want to have a cohesive group of people that share the same vision and are willing to sacrifice a bit of themselves for the, for the broader whole. Um, yeah, that was it from my side. Um, we can do, I think, a couple of questions, right? Yeah, uh, I'm curious about if any of you had ever seen Alchemy, or if you know how it looks like, Genesis, how many people have been? Okay, quite half of the room. Maybe we can open, would that be quick? Yeah, I got it. And, and people can ask questions about, do you have any questions as of the, yes? If I'm happy.
The, the purpose of holographic consensus is to be a scalable protocol. So I think the aim is to scale, yes, but I think we have a lot to learn also from the volume that we are having and from the participation that we are having and also increase the participation with the community that is already uh, holding reputation within the DAO. Um, can you put a few words on the boosting mechanism and how can you track you know, attention to certain proposals? Yeah, so, so right now uh, you have this uh, three queues and every time you submit a proposal that goes to the regular proposal queue. This, uh, this phase is where your proposal stays for longer so it, it requires absolute majority of the people to vote on it. So it's a very slow but resilient process. So what staking does is um, stakers can, um, yeah, can stake gen on the proposals that they think are aligned with the DAO. And as soon as the staking threshold is achieved, the proposal goes to the pending queue and it stays on the pending for one day in the case of Genesis. And in that day, you have the possibility of staking that back down to regular proposals. So that's a defense mechanism for uh, if it was a malicious intent or if it was misaligned with, with the values of the DAO, there is still the chance to put uh, the proposal back to regular. And once that day is over, if uh, the proposal still has, still is in the, pending, in the pending queue, it goes to the boosted proposals. And then when it's boosted, it needs just a relative majority of the votes. So I don't know, if 10 people voted and six voted in favor and four against, the proposal is gonna pass and it just stays there for uh, four days. So. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, just a question on uh, CureDAO. Um, I see there's, uh, the ETH can be, uh, lock die can be used in Alchemy. Mm -hmm. What did you choose for? How did you, ex did you explain to people that they needed to use a strange, different currency? So the good thing is that we don't have internet banking in Curacao, so no mobile banking. Uh, you have to go to the bank and it takes like two or three days. Um, now you do have some browser banking, but it's still pretty slow. So people are easier to adopt an alternative that's near instant or in a couple of minutes. Um, also, we have a partner, it's a big supermarket in Curacao that already accepts crypto. So we have like a pretty good place where people can actually spend their Ethereum. And we have like a local Ether network of people that change Ethereum to the local currency. So it's not that hard for them. It's um, quicker than with the normal banks. The only thing, if you want to change it to Gilders, you would need to sell it to somebody. Um, other than that, we haven't found a real use case yet for let's say the ERC20 token we could use. Uh, we did some brainstorming about doing something like uh, our time sharing where every hour you work for the CuraDAO, you get one token, which you can then trade amongst each other for um, helpful jobs. Um, but we're thinking about um, moving a little bit of the funds to DAI um, because of, um, yeah, just because of the, the volatility of the price. And we don't want to receive some funds advocate that, hey, we have $5,000. And then a month later, you only have 3,000 and people are gonna be super confused. Um, so right now we have 10 ETH of funding um, it's enough for the first one, two, maybe even three months to get some proposals going. And after that, we'll have to reevaluate if Ether was the right choice or if we need DAI only. Um, or maybe even make a local DAO and get a bank account and try to get that through. Um, but that will take some more time. Uh, hello. Uh, it's more about the methodology. Uh, a few 
a few things you said about onboarding, like sharing values, uh, trying to bring this technology where people are using, are quite similar to uh, pedagogic methodologies. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to know if uh, there was planned, uh, if you guys are uh, basing that in some uh, methodology of education, and how was this experience of bringing uh, this technology to the to the group that we, uh, excuse me, I don't remember the... the Curacao. Place. Okay, and yeah. how was this experience? Because uh, it probably could be useful for a lot of DAOs mm -hmm. to replicate that. All right, good question. Um, we haven't used that much of, let's say, um, you said methodology of, um, what did you mention, sorry? It's a methodology of education. Uh, it's, uh, it's Paulo Freire, uh, of the pedagogy of the oppressed. No, I, at least I haven't in, in, in my project. I'll, if you can send it after the conference, I would look, love to look into it. So the, the people we had in Curaçao um, were a bit more higher educated than the average person, um, at least during the first event. But the second event, we really went a little bit bigger. We invited um, people from different backgrounds. So we had people that worked in the oil refinery, people that um, did IT programming. Um, their general reaction um, was quite good, actually, because we phrased it quite simple. We didn't go about decentralized autonomous organizations first. We just first spoke about future of work, um, that our organizational structures that we, st that we use right now are a bit outdated and are slowly bringing it to them like in, in chunks, like, hey, we need to change. Um, this is one of the alternatives. This one uses a new technology that's transparent and immutable, um, slowly getting them there. Um, the hardest part, like I mentioned, was the entrepreneurial part. We managed to get 40 people, of which 20 don't have anything to do with IT, to get a MetaMask account, submit their Ethereum address. There were honestly not a lot of questions. The real questions came when they needed to actually create proposals and contribute to the CuraDAO. Um, that's kind of where they get stuck. So not per se the technology, but more like actually the, the work, the creating the proposals and doing it. And we're still at that stage, to be honest, trying to push them to, hey, you can do whatever you want. Or um, So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this, for example, is the perfect case of you bringing some type of expertise to the DAO. You know, like this is when if you feel passionate about something and you see, oh, there is like one thing, for example, that Luke said before, oh, we didn't uh, know that Cura, Cura Dao could be a thing supported by Genesis. And this is part of the autonomy because only you know that this connection is possible. So you just have to propose that connection to the collective and see if they agree that that's a way that it, you belong and that's what that what you what you're offering is welcome there. So I think this is great to offer um, different educational approach to onboarding and to uh, work with the knowledge asymmetry in the DAO. I think we are uh, slightly over time, but thank you so much for everyone here, and we hope to see you in there soon. <laughs> I would invite everybody here to join the Genesis Telegram channel if you're interested. I, if I can make it, anybody here could become a real DAO member and contribute. And maybe next year you're standing here with your crazy idea um, or a DAO fund or a Cura DAO, whatever. Um, the possibilities are endless. Once, you're, once you understand and feel what you can do and what you can't do, you'll feel really free. Like I just, for example, here, I just sitting in my room and like, hey, I want to go to Berlin. So let's submit it to the DAO. And because of this community and because I've contributed a lot and I know that I'll deliver, I'm able to do so much than if I was just sitting around and trying to do something by myself. So it's a really supportive community and you should join. Thank you. Mm.